We get ready now for Junior Castillo, the former Olympian coming off his first loss, and he's giving up a six inch reach advantage here to Josue Avando from Mexico, who comes in as a veteran, obviously, with 23 fights in his career. This one is scheduled for six rounds, our Corona tail of the tape. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the ref can stop the fight. Fighter can't be saved by the bell, and the fight is official after four rounds, and Ray Flores will officially introduce them. From Cowboys Dance Hall, Premier Boxing Champions now features six rounds of action, introducing first Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. His professional record, 12 wins, 10 losses, one draw. 10 wins coming by way of knockout fighting out of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Josue Obando. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks trimmed with the red. As a professional, 10 wins, nine of those by way of knockout against one loss hailing from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Junior Castillo. There's Junior Castillo, 30 years old from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. He represented his country in the 2012 Olympics. And then in August of 2013, he turned pro. And here he is now with a 10 and one record. Nine of those have come by way of knockout, but he is coming off his first loss. That was on June the 25th to a very impressive Justin Deloach. We were really impressed how he looked, BJ. He's one of the best fighters I've seen come off this uh, PBC broadcast. Uh, you know, to be honest, and fight here in San Antonio, Justin Deloach looked like he had the goods. He reminded me of a, uh, you know, very good counter puncher, very fast reflexes, and uh, really confused Junior Castillo. And honestly, if Ovando doesn't have some very good boxing ability, he's going to really have a tough time tonight with a Castillo because Castillo is very good. Well, the 26-year-old Vando from Guadalajara, Mexico, has fought a lot. 23 pro fights. He's won 12 of those, 10 of those by knockout. He said he's always training. He's ready for the call anytime he gets it. He's ready to step into action. And obviously stepping in against a very hungry Castillo now, as he told us that he's worked harder than ever since that loss. You know, physically, he's a big guy, Ovando, but you know, look at how wide his stance is, and he's kind of on his heels, so it's going to be difficult for him to get out of the way of punches whenever Castillo puts two and three together. Uh, you know, when you're on your toe or your ball, it's easy for you to slide in and out. When you're on your heels and you have a wide stance, there's uh, not a lot of places you can go. Castillo feeling a little better about moving in the weight, too. He's fighting for the first time at around 160 pounds. Yeah, we saw him fight at 154, Kenny, and, you know, maybe that was something that uh, attributed to the fact that he wasn't able to get off to uh, Justin Deloach. Uh, not trying to take any credit away from a great performance by Deloach, but he says he feels comfortable at this new way. Ovando just missing with that right. Punches of Ovando are very slow. Can you see him shoot those two shots, and then he kind of makes that uh, scowl with his face. I don't know if he's taking deep breaths or what exactly he's doing there, but it's kind of interesting. I've never seen that before. Yeah, that was a nice left there by Castillo. Started it with the jab down. You got a tall guy like this. All you got to do is change angles. You see Again, him. good body shots. You see Ovando standing straight up against those ropes. So it's just a matter of time before uh, Castillo is able to squat down with the jab and then come upstairs with the left hand and hit him with something clean. And there's a nice shot again to the body. Castillo said he wasn't worried. Avando has a nice reach advantage on him, about six inches, but he didn't think that would be a factor tonight that he could get inside on. Him. Yeah, it doesn't matter at all. He's able to step right in and uh, slip to the left and right of those punches. And, you know, you see Castillo, you know, really controlling the terms of the fight when he wants to exchange, when he wants to stay on the outside. He's able to uh, control Avando just because, you know, Avando, uh, Vando's not a, uh, a type of guy who's going to go out there and dictate the pace. He's going to look to see what Castillo does and try to survive. Final seconds, round one. This one is scheduled for six, and Vando throws a right. And Castillo moving right back in. Castillo was very emphatic yesterday with us about how he wants to make this. He wants to make a real statement here that he's right back. After losing that fight in June, he wants to get right back in this and win and keep establishing his career here in the States. This is his fifth straight fight here in the U.S. You know, Kenny, a lot of fighters, after they take a loss, they go into a hiatus. They go into a cave and they hide out. And the, the best thing you could possibly do after taking a loss is get right back in the ring and make everybody forget about the loss. So uh, that's what Castillo's doing. 
a good close fight with the Loach, but now he's uh, he's back and he's able to uh, you know have a nice first round and give himself a little confidence, get it back in there. What about Josue Alvando? Uh, you know, I think he's just in there trying to survive. I think he, he knows he came in uh, as the opponent and he's going to try to go as far as he can go in this fight, but it's Castillo's job to make sure that he doesn't go too long and take him too, uh, too far in this, uh, in this matchup. He said he's ready to fight at any time. Bring him in and he'll he'll fight. That's what Avando said. He didn't need much time to get ready. Well, there's there's being ready to fight and there's being properly prepared for a fight, and uh, I think there's a big difference between those two, Kenny. Well, we saw one example earlier on tonight when uh, Gustavo Molina was knocked out by David Perez, and a guy that kept hanging around and hanging around but not doing any damage. And there's Castillo going right to work. It was the big left hand I mentioned earlier in the in the last round, Kenny. Matter of time before he comes with that jab to the body and lands the overhand left. Exactly what you got to do against an opponent who's standing straight up. That punch looked like it woke Avaldo up a little bit. We might Avaldo have a, is. <laughs> we got a fight breaking out here. How about that? Sometimes you've heard of guys want to get knocked out and they get the second punch and they wake back up. <laughs> it wasn't the case like that, but you know sometimes fighters, you know, they take a while to wake up and they they take a good shot like uh, Avaldo just took from Castillo and uh, you know. Castillo reaching with that left. Eric's going that first round <laughs> for Castillo. Made Evaldo a little angry. Don't make me angry. <laughs> well, Evaldo does have 10 knockouts. He's won 12, but 10 of those have been by knockout. And I'd be curious to see the level of opposition of guys that those were against. But, you know, he's going to come. Look at how square he is, though, Kenny. You know, you see him. He's got that wide stance, left foot way in front of the right. But he kind of brings his shoulders forward a little bit. So it gives Castillo a nice big target up and down to be able to uh, be offensive. Castillo's having a little trouble with the height of Avando. Well, there you see the KO percentage. Well, when he wins, he knocks him out, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And uh, he's a good puncher. He gets all of his legs and his body into the punches. That's why he's a knockout puncher. He gets good leverage. But Mondo is happy to fight in the States. This is his sixth straight fight in the U.S. He said he wants to fight more. And he thinks if he puts on a good show here tonight, he'll be able to. You don't really want to see your fighter, Kenny, uh, and I'm talking about Castillo. You don't really want to see your fighter, you know, bouncing around on the outside of the ring. Uh, looking for opportunities against a guy who's a uh, 12 and 12. You want to see Castillo kind of walk him down and do what he does. And if the reason I say that is because Castillo's not a boxer. He's not a guy who sits on the outside. He's a guy who likes to come forward. So uh, you like to see him and be able to impose his will, especially at a new weight bracket, uh, be able to impose that will against the guy who is a uh, 12 and 12. Mondo comes back with a couple of shots. Kind of wild, loopy, unorthodox shots. Hard to get a read on some of those punches, Kenny. Well, you can see he's the taller fighter. He does have that six-inch reach advantage. Head right in the middle, though. Not moving his head at all. Kind of like a statue. Look at how square he is right there. Look at the right shoulder. It's almost completely parallel with the left shoulder. And, uh, you know, you can't get good leverage on punches that way, and it's very difficult to get out of the way of punches as well. See how he brings that right shoulder forward? You don't get awarded on posture. Makes him a big target. Final seconds. Round two scheduled for six. There's Castillo. Uneventful but solid round against Obando. Let's see if this hard work pays off for Castillo. He said he wanted to finish this fight as well as we go into round three. And that last round unofficially scored by Eric Raskin for Castillo as well. Up two rounds none on Obando. Castillo's got to let his hands go. Go up and down, work the body, come straight with the shots. See, Ovando reminded him, listen, uh, I'm not going down easy. Nice left hook to the body by Ovando. Ovando saying, I'm not just here, buddy. I don't care if you were an Olympian. I've had a few fights. I didn't expect this, Kenny. I really didn't. But, uh, you know, I don't know why I would think anything different. You got a tough Mexican fighter coming up, uh, coming up here to try to make a name for himself. And he's got a big opportunity, that brass ring swing, and he's trying to take advantage of it. You're watching Premier Boxing Champions on NBCSN live from San Antonio, Texas. Glad you're with us tonight. Kenny Rice, BJ Flores, and Todd Harris. All the hits not on the football field today. We've seen some good ones here in the ring tonight as well, including a big win tonight by Kent Cruz and by Darwin Price. This is our fifth live fight of the evening. 
It's Junior Castillo, who is in the white and red, the Olympian from the Dominican Republic, taking on Josue Obando from Guadalajara, Mexico, in what has been a fairly close fight here, and coming back is Obando with one of his best. And that's a mistake by Castillo. He's trying to catch all the punches of Obando. Look, Obando gets a lot of leverage on those shots. Make him miss, drop under him, slip, dodge. Don't let him hit the guard because he doesn't lose his balance when he's able to hit you like that, and he can come back with another shot. You make him miss some of those shots, he'll be forced to pull back on the power of those because he's gonna be missing an off balance. Castillo said, too, that even though he wants to be able to finish this fight, he was going to wait and see how it develops. So what's he seeing right now and how this is developed here with Obando? If I'm the corner of Castillo, I'm not really liking how this fight's going. Yeah, he's winning the fight, but he's not controlling the tempo of the fight, I don't think. I feel like Obando's able to, uh, you know, get in there and hit him with some big shots, and Castillo's a little tentative to come in. He's not, uh, you know, having his way with him by any means. And this is a journeyman type of guy, Kenny. This isn't a guy who, you know, if you're a prospect, you're gonna have a lot of troubles with this guy. Of course, you know, Castillo's still learning, he's still improving, he's young, but this is the type of guy he's gotta get through and he's gotta be able to beat impressively to continue to move up. There you see the punches landed. Well, it's almost even. Castillo with just the two punch edge here on Obando. Obando's actually thrown a lot more. You can almost adventure to say to the good right. Landed some of the harder shots as well. I would argue that. I, I would agree with that argument. Maybe not cleaner, but he's definitely landed some of the harder shots. And uh, you can tell Castillo's not too anxious to get in there and mix it up because the awkwardness of Obando. Earlier tonight, David Perez in a super bantamweight fight knocked out Gustavo Molino. Molina. Molina got back up was taken to the hospital with more on his condition. Let's check in now with Todd. All right, thank you very much, Kenny. It was a knockout by David Perez of Gustavo Moreno. Now, it was reported that they had taken him to Brook Army Medical Center, but after I conferred with Dr. Wayne Lee, the ringside doctor, he said, no, he was actually not taken to the hospital against doctor's orders. Now, he said it was a situation where he, with his team, decided he didn't need to go in and have the scan done, so he was not taken there. He was in the arena for a short time after the fight, but he he did not eventually go to Brook Army Medical Center against doctor's wishes, but he did leave the arena under his own power. Kenny. All right, thank you for that update, Todd. And there you look in the corner of Junior Castillo. 10 and one, nine by way of knockouts. He lost for the first time June the 25th, right here in San Antonio, lost to Justin DeLoach. Said he wanted to get right back in it. BJ, you talked about the importance of not going into a corner. Staying over there, moping, get right back into it, and that's what Castillo said he wanted to do, but Josue Abondo has made it a very interesting fight here, certainly, in this round four scheduled for six. And you know, one thing my advisor always told me, you get a guy like this, BJ, don't let him gain confidence. Don't let him believe he can hang around with you. Big left hand by Castillo. Castillo moving in here. Maybe Castillo's feeling that right now. Yeah, but uh, what I was talking about is Castillo needs to make sure he, once he gets uh, Ovando in a little bit of trouble, he gets him out of there. You don't want to let a guy like this hang around and get confidence. All right, Eric, how do you score the fight so far? Well, this is not an easy fight for Junior Castillo. If he thought he was just getting a get well fight here at coming off a loss, it, it hasn't been easy at all for him, thanks to Obando. I have Castillo up two rounds to one. I thought Obando clearly took the third. Uh, the first two were both very close. Uh, so he could even be trailing on the judges' cards, Castillo could. But I do still have him ahead, 29-28. All right, thank you, Eric. That was a good body shot. You could hear that echo there a minute ago by Castillo. Yeah, Castillo landed a couple good shots where we were talking, and uh, I think uh, his corner might have said, listen, you know, you're a good fighter and a good prospect, but we got to go out and show these judges that. So I need you to shoot some more left hands and get active. Yeah, no, no matter how tough Obando is, he comes in here 12, 10, and 1. You're <laughs> supposed to finish this fight. You, you know, take a look at the body shots there. Castillo, he's been tough with the body, but Obando has landed some big shots. He doesn't even have to finish it, Kenny, but he needs to just be in control. And, and exactly like Eric said, uh, Castillo's not in control. He's having some rough moments with the Wando, and, you know, that's what you want your young fighter to have. You want him to have some tests, but you don't want him to have this many tests from guys 12 and 10. Not to say that the Wando can't fight, because he clearly can, but uh, you want your fighter to control the action. Well, Obando is, and that happens early on in the career, when a fighter, management, or whatever the reason, they wind up taking some tough fights, they lose them, and then that seems to be a pattern that you'll see a record that's a little deceptive. They're a better fighter than a 12, 10, and one record would show. And I'm not ready to make, you know, all those assessments just yet. I'm not ready to say, 
Ovando's that much better than his record suggests because, you know, sometimes like, you know, one of the great uh, great uh, football coaches, Bill Parcells, does, you know, you are what your record says you are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, maybe he is a 12 and 10 fighter. Maybe Castillo took him lightly. And uh, if he did, that was a mistake. Yeah, for a guy that said he couldn't wait to get back, he was hungry to show he could get back on the winning track. Castillo is in a fight here. Castillo with some good shots in this round. Definitely came out and uh, got control back of the fight in this round. But, you know, like I said, uh, with, with a guy like Avando, you don't want to let him hang around. You don't want to let him get confidence. It's just almost safer to, you know, have a full press attack and really try to get him out of there because he is dangerous. Final seconds, round four, scheduled for six. And Abondo missing some shots there. Good round for Junior Castillo. So basically, Castillo's corner's getting a little frustrated, aren't they? They're saying, put away, Obando. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Obando's corner is telling, uh, telling him that uh, Castillo's there to be taken. Here we go, round five, scheduled for six. Castillo coming out, firing out of there this time, the man in the white and red. And Junior Castillo, very aggressive at the start of this round. I think he needs to do this, Kenny. In a six-round fight, you got to remind you got to remind the guy sometimes. Look, you're the opponent, and I'm gonna I'm gonna remind you right now that this is not uh, this is not your night. And Castillo came out in the last round and the beginning of this round, looking to remind Ovando that he's just here, uh, you know, to pick up a check. And uh, Ovando uh, apparently didn't get the memo. Castillo getting that last round unofficially from Eric. I mean, this is Castillo's fight to lose. Obando right. was just making him probably a little more interesting than people thought. Nice oh, right hand by Obando a second ago. Obando, is, he kind of sneaks those in. Yeah, he landed a nice straight right hand off a double jab, and he's just, he's deceptive. His punches look slow, he looks awkward, but that's because he's long. Uh, a lot of times uh, with, with guys that tall, they do look like everything's in slow motion, but it's just, he's big, and uh, you know, the awkwardness makes it more difficult for a guy like Castillo comes from that very good amateur background, Olympic fighter. He's used to guys being, uh, you know, very technical, having a good amateur pedigree, and Ovando's the opposite of that. But still effective. And Castillo. Looking for another opening, and right back is Obando with a combination. Nice three-punch combination. And you see that length, even though he squares up when he's in front of you, when he punches, he does something really well, Kenny. He really turns his shoulders and gets leverage into those shots, so. He gets maximum body weight of 162 pounds in each jab and right hand. Not the prettiest thing to watch, Kenny, but it is uh, it is powerful nevertheless. And he's tall. I mean, he's got the height advantage on most guys he'll face, and has the reach advantage. And he's probably frustrated Castillo a few times here tonight. He definitely has, because Castillo hasn't been able to do what he wants to do. Obviously, Castillo came out in the first couple rounds and uh, showed the left hand, showed the right hooks, tried to get close. And, you know, rounds three, four, and five, he's really had to change his strategy because uh, Ovando was able to be effective in certain spots. <laughs> a swing and a miss. <laughs> a Babe Ruth type of swing right there. He really lost his balance. Felt a little breeze over here from the big man. <laughs> And Obando gets a nice right in there. Not a lot of creativity on the combinations. Can he hands down by the waist? Straight jab, right hand. Nice right hand again by Obando. He's just he's he's doing enough, Ken. He's winning this round, and he's uh he's doing enough for if I'm in the corner of Castillo, I'm gonna say, listen, we, we gotta go back and make some adjustments because we did not have an easy night with this kid. No, and this is a guy that uh, has fought a lot of guys all over the place. 23 fights in a career. This is 24th, and he's given Castillo fits. Castillo coming off his first career loss. That was to Justin Deloach back in June here in San Antonio. Said he was anxious to get back. Abondo was supposed to be a guy that he was able to win rather easily against. Supposed to be, but Abondo's made it an entertaining fight here and a competitive fight. One that Castillo is going to win, it would appear but certainly one that may have uh, been a little different than most people thought. Abondo getting that last one from Eric, and that's how close it is. This is a very close fight. <laughs> and look at him coming out, won the fight. He's coming out, shooting the double jab, shooting the right hand. He's keeping it long, and he's keeping it straight exactly like his corner told him to. And, you know, you just got to respect the guy who comes in here 12 and 10 against the uh, Olympian. 
coming in for sure as the opponent. And uh, like like we oh. said earlier, he just he didn't get the memo. And Castillo said, you know, I'm giving up six inches in reach to this guy, but I don't think it'll be a factor. He told us that yesterday at the fighter meeting. Well, it's become a factor. How many times do you watch a tape as a fighter, as an athlete? You know, he's not that fast. He's not that quick. He's, you know, as a defensive back, he's not going to, this receiver can't run by me. He doesn't have the speed, but when you actually get out there on the field, you get in the ring, you realize there's other intangibles that uh, make certain guys very effective. Vondo is one of those guys. Vondo is. And I'm not saying he's going to win the fight, but he could potentially, uh, you know, tie it up and make things very close with a, with a decisive uh, round here in round six here. Well, he's talked about he took some fights early on in his career. Maybe he shouldn't have taken because they were against very tough competition. He was a young guy. He lost some fights. Did Obando. Thus the 12-10-1 record coming in here. Not the smoothest style, but he has been effective and made it entertaining. As we get ready to wrap up this night of live fighting here, I got to say this to my friend that we worked together for five years. All best wishes as you go for the Cruiserweight World Championship coming up October 15th in Liverpool, England. I appreciate that, Kenny. Fighting Tony Bellew in Liverpool, England. Uh, another great opportunity for me to go out there and, uh, you know, accomplish one of my dreams to win a world title. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Been training very hard and uh, very excited to be here in uh, San Antonio for a couple days during the training camp. Well, in our fifth year of working together, we're all excited for you that uh, we've been watching your career and working with you and very happy. All the best. You know, we're, you know we're not we're not uh, going to be unbiased about that fight. We, 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 we wish you well. Good back and forth action here. And, Avando came in and proved the test that he was. You know, a guy who's ever been knocked out, a guy who came in and took Junior Castillo around, definitely tested him. Maybe a little more of a test than uh, Team Castillo wanted tonight, Kenny. Well, it certainly is, BJ. Avando is taking this one all the way and giving Junior Castillo all he wanted in this six-round fight that some people didn't think would go the distance. But it did. It's going to the judges. And it might be close. Unofficially, Eric has it as a close fight. If it's not close, it should be close. It should be. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Joao Elizondo scores about 60 to 54. And judges Glenn Crocker and Ursula Perez see the contest identical 58 to 56. All for your winner by unanimous decision. Junior Castillo. A unanimous decision victory for Castillo that makes him 11 and 1. BJ, your thoughts? Uh, one judge had it 60 54, which means six rounds to zero. The judge should never be able to judge a fight again. That was ridiculous. Uh, you know, I could see Castillo winning the fight, no question about it, but it was a very competitive fight. But the guy, 60 54, uh, never to set foot near a pen and paper again to judge a fight. Well, Castillo said he wanted to come back and win. I think he might be a little surprised by the unanimous decision, but he does bounce back and he gets that win after suffering a loss here back in June.